What up, players? Warbot stay up in this mood. I had some PMs and a comment or two about how I paint my dwarf warriors. Um, so I thought I'd do a little Warbots tutorial on how I painted them. Now, as you can see, they've got the same unifying colors overall. Some of them are a little bit different. So I am going to talk to you about how I painted them overall and then how you can do it. So we're going to start with base coats. The first thing you're going to need to do, obviously, is under undercoat, spray prime your dwarves. And I went with a dark gray. found that that was the best color for me to be able to get a good base color off of. Now all of the dwarves share the same colors, and then, and then the, the different regiments have different accent colors that make them stand out. So I'm going to go over the base colors first, and then we'll go over a little bit of what the different colors are for the separate units to do as their base coats, okay? So, all of these models, and these are the three models that I'm going to use as examples, <coughs> all of these models use Narlock Green as the base coat for the green. So, when we talk about where you're going to be painting them, I use the green, as you can see, for the hem of all of the chainmail skirts, as well as for the warriors for their sleeves, and for the cuffs here, for the cuffs here, or the shoulders. Now you don't have to do that. If you want, you could substitute by having the hammerers have green sleeves and red hem, or a green, I guess, under hem, and then a red. Uh, hem for the chainmail skirt, or even red, um, red accent somewhere else. But as a rule, what I'm trying to do is keep the reds for the show for the arms of the hammerers, green for the arms of the of the two-handed weapon warriors, and blues for the arms of the um, quarrelers if possible. So if you're going to change some of the other stuff around then try try as much as possible to not um, you know you, use your discretion. It, it really if you if you want to use a really large variety of colors then you're just going to come up with a, a different look and I, I kind of want my units to be cohesive while still maintaining a different color schemes for their different units. So that's kind of the the thing that I'm going to adopt. So Narlock Green for for any green parts you want to do. And then we have Bolt Gun Metal for all the metallics. Do all the metallics, even anything you want to paint in gold because the Dwarf Bronze isn't going to stick very well to the, the primer as it is. You need a good solid uh, paint already underneath I found for any bronze or gold color. So, so paint all the metal with Bolt Gun Metal and just keep in mind where you want to have the the gold to be sh painted on so that it shines off later in the in the process. Then you're going to use Calvin Brown, and Calvin Brown I use for a bunch of different things such as boots, belts, and hair even. So for this guy in the middle I gave him Calvin Brown hair, and I use Calvin Brown on the pouch and this little holster here. Calvin Brown for the belt and Calvin Brown for the boots. Next to Calvin Brown we have our dark flesh which is going to be our red color. And the red color is dark flesh because it's not as bright red as scab red. It's not as red. It's, it's kind of like a dark reddish brown and that's kind of what I want to to kind of tie into the, the green. It doesn't pop as much uh, the, the colors are very dark and serious looking, a, a lot more serious than the fanciful blood red and or, or any of those other reds. So like I, like you can see I put it for the head flaps and for the he under hem and for the sleeves of the hammerers. But I might change it out for the next group of warriors. I might keep some of it the same. Um, it all depends on you know how you feel you want to paint your, your, your dwarves. Um, I do suggest some variety, but I don't want you to give too much because besides the weapons, just looking at the way they're painted should give you a good idea of how you split up the units. My busted up Talarn Flesh paint pot 
obviously for all the skin. And the only skin that these models show are their hands and their faces. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Then we go into specific colors for specific units. Chaos Black and Camry Brown. Chaos Black I use for the boots for the hammer. So you could use black as a sleeve color because no other unit has black on it. Camry Brown I also used as a beard color. So a lot of these guys are gonna have, like my hammer and my crossbow man here have Camry Brown beards. But I'm also giving Camry Brown as a as a clothes cloth, cloth color to our uh, great weapon warriors. So, so here you see I use it for the cape. You can also use the Camry Brown for the sleeves or for the hem of the chainmail coat. And for our quarreler here, the two things that separate him from the rest are bone color for the helmets. So any of the guys that have helmets with bones or other ivory-like pieces, we use Deneb Stone. And we use Shadow Gray as the blue color. So I use it for the sleeves, but like all the other guys, you can use it for the hem of the of the skirt. You can use it for the this part of the helmet, the, the padding, or you could use it for the hem by the shoulders. So mix and match, we're gonna get our base coats on now. And like I said, you can mix and match those different colors. Chaos Black for the hammerer, Kemri Brown for the Axe Warrior, and Shadow Gray, and um, any bone is in Deneb Stone for the Quarreler. Okay, so I'm gonna go do my three painting models right now, and I will show you what they look like when we get back. All right, as you can see, I got onto the gold, which is just a lot of detailing. So picking out the points that you wanna bring out as gold. And for that, I use dwarf bronze, which looks like this. It's a little bit deeper than Shining Gold. Shining Gold has more of a yellowish tinge. This is more of a orangey uh, color to it, which I think stands out really well. So yeah, just pick the details that you want. For my hammer, I try to pick up, pick out as much gold as possible to show their, their greater wealth than the regular warriors. So their armbands are usually gold with silver banding. Whereas my warrior has silver with gold banding. You see the warrior doesn't have any gold on his helmet. And just some detailing on his axe, but not too much. And then the little, the little uh, totem there at the bottom. I also added Adeptus Battle Gray to my list of primary colors for the warriors, or for all of the models, just because it needed one more color just to break up the other greens and browns and the reds. So feel free to use Adeptus Battle Gray, which is a Citadel Foundation color. The great thing about that is that you can also use it for your beards. Um, is it this guy? Yeah, so I used it, I used Adeptus Battle Gray to paint this guy's beard. On the subject of beards, the other two colors you can use are Camry Brown and Calton Brown. So this is Camry Brown on this guy's beard. It's a nice light brown. And this is also Camry Brown. So Camry Brown you're also going to use to paint the rope for the crossbow. What I did was I painted Dwarven Bronze onto the cogs the crossbow but you can do yours differently if you want. I also painted it on the armrest and the cogs by the trigger housing and the banding on the barrel or the stock I mean not the barrel. I was running out of hands holding arrows so this is one of the alternate hands. It's the hand that's holding a pipe so I just gave it some gold highlighting. I gave his ring a little flash of gold I use dark flesh a lot for the the um, handles of the two-handed weapons. 
think it's a good rich leathery color and you can also use it for you know you're also going to be using it as the reds for the rest of your unit so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the shading so i'm going to be using these colors a sermon blue for the sleeves on the crossbowman devlin mud for any of the browns as well as the chain mail then when that's dry bad at black for all of the chain mail as well as the weapons and Thraka green for any of the green parts okay so i'm gonna go apply the washes now and i will show you what they look like and we will finish the video when i return all right so after the washes have been applied i also forgot to add uh ogre and flesh wash to the uh, skin areas i think i forgot to mention that in the last video but after our washes are applied and you wait at least half an hour for them to dry find that that's a good drying time we're just gonna highlight back up a little bit wherever you want however much you want some people like their models to be really dark some people like them to just have a little bit of, of shading to them so so we're just going to reapply our base coat colors and then for the gold we're actually going to give highlights of mithril silver or the dwarf bronze but you don't want to use too much and you just want to lightly brush it on where you think the light would hit it and that'll give a really great reflective effect like on this guy's face mask and on his gauntlet okay so we're going to re-highlight our models now and then when we're done with that we will finish off by showing you how i do my caracurn bases see you when that's done all right so i did some re-highlighting touch-ups i added some eyeballs to the guys that do not have a face mask so to do that i just added i painted black horizontal slashes and then I painted inside using a very thin brush and a steady hand horizontal whites and then vertical slashes for the pupils inside so now that all of the highlighting is done I've done all I'm gonna do for these guys since they're only line troops and um, I'm looking for speed as well as efficiency I am going to work on the bases. For the bases, because of the gray primer, they look a little splotchy, so I'm going to go over those again with Chaos Black. But before I do that, that's going to be the last step. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the top with Adeptus Battle Gray. And then, after I do Adeptus Battle Gray for the gravel, I'm going to paint on some Codex Gray. Boom! And let's see if I can find it. If I can be three for three with finding my paint. As a very final highlight color, I am going to use Fortress Gray, which I cannot seem to find on my desk right now, so I'm gonna have to go looking around for it. But you've got three colors. There it is. Adeptus Battle Gray, you're going to paint over the black gravel at the top, then you're going to dry brush Codex Gray, and then very light dry brush of Fortress Gray, which should give you this effect. Then, I'm just going to paint randomly on Shining Gold Nuggets. For this one, I am going to use Shining Gold because Shining Gold is a little bit more yellow, and so it'll catch the light, it's a little bit brighter, whereas the Dwarf Bronze, you see, has a little bit more of a darker orange-brown tint. So it doesn't catch the eye as much as the gold will on the gravel. And for that, I won't put more than four littered around the base. So just find random pieces of rock that you want to change into gold nuggets. And that's how you do a Karakurin base. So we'll come back when that is done and when we wrap up this video. And there you have it. I finished basing my models. I finished painting them. They are ready to add to my burgeoning army so thank you for watching this video on how I'm painting my dwarfs for my November dwarf challenge and um, if you have any questions or comments please leave them below in the comment box and don't forget to like this video before you leave and um, 
yeah, have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.